Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we continue our Basically series. For those of you who are unaware, this is the series I have put together where we make the best and almost awesomest of budget decks. How budget are they? Well, these decks will not cost you a single rare or mythic to build. That is awesome! That's right. So, without further ado, join me today for our deck that I'm calling Basically Dungeons. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content. You can support me monthly for a small amount on Patreon, where I have all of my extended bonus footage posted. Or, for free, all you can just do also is just join our growing community on Discord. Your support helps keep this channel going. All links are in the details below. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right in. So as you can see here, our Dungeons deck today is going to be three colored. It's going to be white, blue, and black. We're looking at an average mana curve of about 2.3. You will have total 12 creatures, 13 instants, 6 sorceries, 5 artifacts, 3 enchantments, and 24 lands. This dungeon deck, as you'll see, is going to be mostly a mid-range pile mixed in with a bit of a control aspect to it. So it is going to be a lot more slower than previous other deck decks we've done. And also you'll notice that there's not much consistency here, but there has to be a reason for that, which I'll explain in just a little bit. So to begin, starting in the 3-drop slot, we will begin with Cloister Gargoyle here. It's an artifact creature gargoyle that just simply says when it enters, you venture into a dungeon. And as long as you've completed a dungeon, the gargoyle will get plus 3, plus 0, and has flying. Once we get our payoff by completing a dungeon, a lot of our creatures will do a lot more with their abilities. However, Cloister Gargoyle also allows us to then explain the dungeon mechanic. For those of you that were not around when Dungeons & Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms was added to Arena and Magic in general, here's basically how it works. Once you venture into a dungeon, which is the ability we're triggering, you'll then be able to pick from one of three dungeons that you can see off to the side right here, where one of these is what you can choose to enter, and then as you keep venturing into a dungeon, you'll move to a new room and then get new abilities to trigger off. One of the cool things, at least about the dungeon mechanic, is none of your opponents can interact with it. Once that game piece is there, it's there for the rest of the game, which is actually kind of neat, and that's honestly why I actually wanted to put this deck together. But in any case, we'll talk more about dungeons and ideally which ones you want to trigger a little bit later on. Otherwise, our other card we're going to be utilizing in the 3-drop slot will be Displacer Beast here. Same thing like the Gargoyle, when it enters, you venture into a dungeon. However, we only need one copy of this because it's a secondary ability, allows us to then pay 4 mana and then bounce it back to our hand. Yuntan Fang Blade here is a Snake Rogue, and when it does combat damage to a player, that's how we'll be able to venture into a dungeon. One of the sweet parts is it also has Death Touch, so almost always you'll be able to guarantee get that damage through because usually your opponent doesn't want to lose their creature to Death Touch. And then finally, in the 3 drop slot, we'll have Hama Pashar Ruin Seeker. This is a 3 mana legendary human wizard. And its really cool ability allows us to basically trigger dungeons we own an additional time. To put it another way, if this sounds a little confusing, what means is anytime we venture into a dungeon, you'll be able to then hit the same dungeon room two times. If we hit Yawning Portal here, that top one right there, you'll be able to gain two life instead of one life. That's actually a really cool thing we can do with Hama Pashar. And then finally, in the 4-drop slot, you'll have Barrowin of Clan Odar. So this is a 4-mana, 3-3, three, three, Dwarf, Cleric, and it's Legendary. And it says, when it enters, you get to venture into a dungeon. Whenever the clan attacks, you get to return one creature card with a mana value of 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield as long as we've completed a dungeon. As long as we keep triggering our dungeon abilities, this will allow us to just keep recurring all of our creatures over and over again to then keep triggering more abilities with this. Circling back over to the 1-drop slot for all the support pieces, because we have quite a few in this deck. We start off with Getaway Glamour. Technically, the card actually does require you to spend more mana because the Supreme Mechanic means you have to pay something additional, but ideally, you can either use this for two mana to either blink something back, or you can then utilize its three mana ability to then destroy a target creature if no other creature has greater power. So this can be either removal or just something to bounce back and forth, such as your Gargoyle or your Barrow in, just to get more value and venture into more dungeons. We have some removal with Portable Hole here, just again, exiles a non-land permanent with a mana value of two or less. Requisition right here, same thing like the Spree Mechanic underneath Getaway Glamour. It technically does cost more mana than it actually reads. However, you can then choose what you want to. It can either be Artifact, Enchantment Hate, or even both. Or you can put a plus one, plus one counter on each of our creatures we control. We have a single copy of Fly here. This also will help us just get a little bit more out of our dungeons as long as we can put it on a creature. It does give it flying, so that means it will be evasive, which is great for us. But just remember that, again, we don't want to rely on this too much. So because we only have a handful of creatures, just one copy is all we need. 
Metamorphic Blastier is another spree mechanic, as you can see here, but it's also really great and really flexible for what it does. At instant speed, you can either pay for two mana and then turn any one of your opponent's creatures into a white rabbit with a toughness of 0-1, basically just getting even the biggest threats out of the way for us, or for four mana, we can then just draw some extra cards. Spell Pierce here is going to be one of your small, but again, effective counter spells in the early part of the game. Blood Chief's Thirst, again, it may be a little slower than, say, utilizing, oh, I don't know, Fatal Push, but we want the flexibility in this deck, so that's why we're going to choose that over Fatal Push instead. Going into the 2-drop slot, you'll have a little bit more support with Sunset Revelry. Again, only one copy is all you need, but this just helps us just kind of stabilize depending on how your opponent is doing versus us. You can either get another card if they have more cards than you, you can get some human tokens on the battlefield if they have more creatures than you, or you can gain more life if they have more life than you. You also have a copy of You Come to a River. This is mostly going to be used for the bounce mechanic, or we can make one of our creatures unblockable until end of turn. Better Triumph is a little bit more of a stronger removal option here for us. We may either have to pay 3 life, or you can discard a card to destroy a target creature or Planeswalker. Face Reversal, since we only have 12 creatures in the deck, we only need 3 copies of this, but this allows us to bring back one of our creature cards from our graveyard to our hand, and allows us to trigger again another dungeon. Dovin's Veto here, only a single copy of this, but this is just a small you need just to get rid of maybe one of those key cards that just has to be dealt with on the battlefield. And again, because it's uncounterable, we have to have at least one of those just to help us out with our game plan. Faithful Mending here, same thing, another single copy of this, allows us to basically just draw two cards, gain some life, and discard two cards. The Flash will be back ability will be great in the mid to late game. And then in the three drop slot here, bar the gate may seem very narrow because it can only counter a creature or planeswalker spell, but you'll be surprised at how well you can actually utilize this when you need it to. And also again, it helps us just trigger off more dungeon venturing. You'll have a copy of You Find the Villain's Lair. Depending on, again how your games go, you can actually swap in an extra copy of this and replace Bar the Gate, or vice versa. It really just depends on, again, how you want to play it. But again, same thing, single copy. You can either use it to counter a spell, or then just loot by drawing two cards and discarding two cards. And then finally, in the 4-drop slot, you'll have Cast Out here. It's our most expensive spell at 4 mana, but it does have the Flash ability, so when you flash it in, and then when it enters, you just get to exile a non-land permanent until it leaves the battlefield. If you actually don't need a copy of this, it just cycles for a single mana, so basically it can just help you just throw it away to dig out something else instead. For your land package, again, we're going to be as simple as possible because we are ultra budget, but then you should be able to get away with this because then we are a very slow deck. You have 5 planes, 4 islands, 3 swamps, and then full sets of all the tap life gain lands. You can swap these out if you need to depending on what your other game plan might be, but these are mostly the best because you want to keep yourself stable. So Tranquil Cove, Scoured Barrens, and Dismal Backwater all do the same thing. They enter and help you gain one life. If you do want to take this in the best of three, and honestly, I'm just going to say it right now, this deck might actually be better in best of three versus best of one. Here's going to be your options for you. For combo decks out there and other enemy control decks, get Deafening Silence. This will help slow down the game plan so that way you can make sure you can then go off without much of an issue. A copy of Shieldred's Edict here for more select options when it comes to singular control decks out there that use one or two threats to then get rid of them. Copies of Elspeth Nightmare here, again just more removal, but also this will help us then discard a card with our secondary saga ability, and it'll provide an exiling effect for the graveyard. And then as far as the remaining cards, depending on again how your opponent is handling your deck, and depending on where you're at game 2 or even game 3, you can then add swap in extra copies of Cast Out here, Spell Pierce, Blood Chief's Thirst, Sunset Revelry, extra copies of Govdun's Veto, a Faithful Mending here, Bar the Gate, and wrapping it up, another copy of You Find the Villain's Lair. Now as far as tips and tricks I would give you for this deck, the biggest advantage you have with this deck is you have a massive amount of versatility. Although it does look a little strange to have giant piles of one ofs and two ofs, well, that's actually one of the best things that you have versus your opponent. Your opponent will have no idea what are the cards they need to anticipate to defeat you. And that's again going to give you plenty of time to build up your game plan. Once you keep putting out your tap lands, that one extra life also will help you stabilize, especially against the more aggro decks out there in the format. Your other biggest advantage, of course, is not only do you have the versatility, but you also have a lot of ways to recur a lot of your creatures, even though you only have a small amount. Once you start getting your dungeons off, your opponent will not be able to last against the amount of value they will provide. One tip I will also give you when it comes to the dungeons is you need to figure out early on what dungeons, depending on how your opponent is playing against you, will give you the best value and advantage. So to put it another way, we'll go throw on the, up on the screen right now one more time all three dungeons. When it comes to a control deck, you're probably going to want to trigger off mostly the dungeon of the Mad Mage. This is a very slow dungeon. It has six rooms to go through just to get to the final ability, but if you can get there, your payoff is being able to draw three cards and you can cast a spell for free. However, do not use this obviously against an aggro deck. 
if you do want to then deal with an aggro deck, your better advantage might be the Lost Mine of Pandelver. This is only going to take four rooms, but it does give you the best amount of value for the time it takes to get through the dungeon. And then finally, if you have an opponent where you do need to close out the game ASAP, you can use Tomb of Annihilation instead. This will drain you faster, but remember that you can always gain life back in various ways with your deck. The payoff for this deck is you'll be able to get a 4-4 Black Odd Horror Creature token with Death Touch, allowing you to basically put additional pressure on your opponent and hopefully close out the game against some of the slower decks in the format. However, your biggest disadvantage for the deck is because of how slow it is, if your opponent can curve out perfectly with maybe their aggro plan or just outvalue you before you start triggering your dungeons, you will get run over quickly and you will have a bad time. That's not to say this deck is bad, just understand the limitations of course of being in a super budget deck like this means that you will be slow, but again, slow and steady for this deck will definitely help you in the long run win the race. I mentioned this a little bit earlier during the deck tech, but I'll say one more time. The other way you can get more value out of this deck is, this is one of the few times I'm going to say, you probably want to play this in best of three. Can you play this in best of one? You can, but you're going to get the best value and the most advantage out of this by playing this in a best of three match. So you could swap out what you need to from the sideboard and then put in much more specialty things to then have a way to counter anything your opponent throws at you. But with all that said, if you are a fan of this mechanic and if you do want to try a little bit more playing around with it, as always, just like every other deck I've done, Done in the past, I will show you some examples of previous deck techs we've done that actually do have you invest in a couple of extra raiders or mythics here to get better value out of the deck. If you're a fan of control decks out there or just piles like this, definitely check out what we have above, and I'll of course leave links in the details below and throughout the video. But my only other final thoughts I want to give on the deck is this. Honestly, I originally started with a control package for these three colors, but we've already kind of done a control deck, and I want to try to provide as much variety and differentiation between each of these ultra budget decks, so no matter what kind of player you are, you'll have a wide diversity of decks that you can pick from, which is why we decided to invest in dungeons. I'm actually a big fan of the dungeon mechanic myself, but I understand that even on an ultra budget, it can be very difficult to pull off. However, if you're still a fan of the mechanic, if you are a fan of control or mid-range, and if you're a fan of getting extra value out of mechanics that are very unique, I would definitely say, give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to then take control of the board, you'll have a lot of fun doing so. You'll be very surprised at how much value dungeons can provide. And I assure you, once you then complete a couple of dungeons and overwhelm your opponent with that value you will get, you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!